Coming up on the Sports Desk, volleyball season is in full swing. Find out if the boys at Bishop could find their way against Delray Leafo Cathedral. Plus, Torrance Tata's boys volleyball team looks to capture another win against Rival North, the last time in the Tartars gym. And as always, we'll get you all caught up on scores, highlights, and updates on Torrance's prep and JUCO sports scene. The Sports Desk starts right now. How's it going, Torrance? Welcome to another week here on the Sports Desk. I'm your host, Colin Kushner. Remember, hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag the Sports Desk and hashtag Boomsauce. It's that time of the year again. No, no, not Christmas or Hanukkah. Well, if you're a volleyball fan or player here in Torrance, I guess you could consider Pioneer League play the most wonderful time of the year. The Torrance Tartars winners a four straight and a perfect record in Pioneer League play. And conversely, for the North Saxons, well, They've lost three straight trying to snap that losing streak. Torrance looking to stay perfect in league while the Saxons looking to grab their first league win of 2015. Let's pick it up in the first set. Uh, Kyle Nakahara with the set, Max Perez with the slam. We're all tied up at nine, same set. Tory, Torrance rises off four straight points, hard drop by a point, but North uh, ties this up. Torrance takes the first set, second set. North up 22 to 21. Uh, and the spike. North takes point in set number two to the third set. The next two would be all Torrance. Perez to Nakahara to Gonzalez. Boom sauce. Torrance takes 21-10. Lean of the set, 25-10. to To the fourth set, Torrance up by six. Game point, Kevin Gonzalez with the block. The Tadas take down the Saxons. Three sets to one. So Torrance grabs their fifth straight win. Three of those big Pioneer League matches. Max Perez has 17 kills and Kyle Polk adds 19 digs in the big rivalry win for the Tatas. And for the Saxons, well, their struggles continue as they drop their fourth straight game to those four big Pioneer League losses. Now, when I think of historical sites in sports, I think Wrigley Field, Fenway Park, and how could I ever forget the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field? You may be wondering, what does this have to do with Torrance? Well, I'm sure you all know Torrance High School is one of the oldest high schools in California and the oldest in the Torrance Unified School District. For the final time, the Tartars said goodbye to their beloved gym and the volleyball team had the pleasure of closing the old chapter of the Torrance High Gym on a high note. The Torrance Tartars won their third Pioneer League game this year, but the win wasn't your average victory. It had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it's the North Saxons, but that the victory would be the last in the current Torrance High School Gym. For us, this is the last match in our in our old gym, so we go under modernization starting next week. So we had an, a crosstown rival. We have our last match in our 40-something-year-old gym. So we had a, we had some some nerves, but it's it was it's always fun. Torrance High School has been around since 1917, the city's oldest school. So if my math is correct, that makes THS 98 years young, and one of the oldest in the state of California. And while playing the last match ever in the old gym means a lot to Coach Jones, he also feels that his players are in the same boat. They've only been here, you know, on varsity two, three, four years. I think they understand what it means in the greater picture of the program and the school to be the last athletic match in this gym. But I, I think they get it. I, I think they understand how much it meant to me. While the old Torrance gym gets a complete makeover, the Chargers volleyball squad will be on the road for the rest of the season. We played three of our five home league matches already, so we front-loaded the first half. So we'll play twice at West and then twice at Centennial, and then we'll have our regular uh, road schedule with North and South. Staying in the boys' prep volleyball scene, the Bishop Montgomery Knights are a perfect 2-0 in league play so far and have won two straight. Bishop trying to keep the streak alive against Delray League rivals Cathedral. The Knights went 1-2 against the Phantoms last year, including that Southern Section title game loss. Uh, let's pick it up in set number one. Cathedral up by six. Andrew Avias spikes the ball, count it. Cathedral takes a seven-point lead in set one, 25-14. Set two, no score. Blake Miles, boom sauce, gets the kill. Bishop up 1-0. Very next play, Miles again crushed. He would have nine on the night. Bishop loses set two, 30-28 to set three. Bryce Tocatlian with the spike. 
he would have 10 kills in this one. And later in the third, Cathedral at match point to Cotley an attempt and to finish off Cathedral with the dump, but it's blocked. Cathedral goes on to win that set 25-22, and the Phantoms sweep the Knights three sets to nil. Bryce Atel Catlian has four blocks, and Josh Arevlo has 18 digs in the loss to Cathedral. It's Bishop's third straight loss at the hands of the Phantoms, dating all the way back to last year. Bishop's struggles against Cathedral have been going on for quite some time now. The tough Delray League doesn't help, but the Phantoms as of late seem to have the Knights number. Kiana Martin has that story for you. Volleyball season is well underway, and Bishop Montgomery experienced their first league loss of the season to the Cathedral Phantoms. Cathedral finished Bishop's season in the CIF Southern Section Finals last year 3-1. And this year, Bishop refuses to follow a repeat. The more we lose, the more we want to win. And so I think in the second game and the third game, we really just put out all our effort. But, you know, they were a pretty good team, too. Since 2009, both teams have matched up 15 times. And Cathedral has come on top eight of those meetings. We had a game plan going in. We've played this team numerous times in the past. I knew kind of the style of game they play. They wore us down a little bit. They're, they're definitely a consistent team, you know, um, but they're a readable team if you stay in system and communicate. With Bishop's boys first three and out loss of the entire regular season, the team plans to refocus and regroup while taking a lesson from this loss to prepare themselves for the rest of their season. The Knights went seven and one last season. And after losing multiple players this year, their mid-season focus is to rebuild their Delray League championship caliber team and to begin to improve where most needed. We're a little bit, you know, inexperienced. So uh, we only have a few guys back from our team last year. And, uh, you know, we've been getting better. And what I'm taking from that is in telling the guys is, you know, we're, we're improving in so many different ways. It doesn't mean that we're always going to win. But, you know, if we just keep working on things we need to improve that, you know, eventually, hopefully we'll be peaking at the right time in the season. Heading halfway into the season, the Knights plan to bounce back from this loss. And they seem very confident that their next meet with Cathedral will not repeat their last. We're not going to lose another game. We're going to win them all. Bishop is currently 2-1 and one in their league standings and are eager to rematch Cathedral again later on this month. From Bishop Montgomery, I'm Kiana Martin, reporting for the Sports Desk. Thanks for that, Kiana. Bishop will have a shot at redemption against the Phantoms later this month on April 28th. When we come back, we are going to take you to the prep baseball and softball scene, where we will get you all caught up on all news from the Diamond. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home walk restaurant need a review? No. He's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do. I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Hey, um, this job looks perfect. Uh, it says you need people skills. Check. Uh, driver's license. Check. And a high school diploma. You've got one of those, right? Skip the drama. Get your diploma. I got that. You are good to go. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back, everybody. Hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner. Using the hashtag the sports desk and hashtag boom sauce. Over to the baseball diamond now. The Anaheim Lions tournament features some of Southern California's best. And for the West Warriors, well, they have been having a successful 2015 campaign up to this point. The Warriors won their first game of the tourney, lost the second, and came back to win the next two. In the final game of the Anaheim Lions tournament, Wes sneaks past Downey 1-0 after putting up 16, yes, I said 16 runs against La Cañada. Trevor Malik goes 3-for-3 three three with a solo home run in the 1-0 shutout victory. So, the Warriors grab four wins in the Anaheim Lions tournament and just one loss. Wes averaged just over five runs per game only allowing under two runs in the five tourney games played. The Warriors getting it done as of late since they were crushed by Miracosta in the first two games of the season. They are 10-2 since. Meanwhile, up north, 
The North Saxons fall to Redonia Union 7-0. That's North's fifth loss this season and the second time they have been shut out this year. It's North's third straight loss to the Seahawks, with their last win against Redondo dating all the way back to 2013. Down south, the Spartans winners are four straight, averaging just over six runs per game during their streak. Looking to make that five straight against Gundo, the Spartans with an early 5-0 lead over the Eagles after four innings. El Segundo adds two runs in the bottom of the fifth, but that wasn't enough as Drake Pingle and the rest of his Spartan teammates grab another dub. And in their next game against Notre Dame, South's five-game win streak comes to a close. Notre Dame puts up two runs in the first, seven in the second, and one in the fourth to cruise to the 10-0 victory. That's South's second shutout loss of the season as they are now 7-4 overall on the year. Meanwhile, over on the softball diamond, the Bishop Montgomery Knights have lost four straight. Three of those coming to Delray League opponents. The Knights taking on St. Anthony. Bishop up by two runs heading into the bottom of the fifth until St. Anthony tacks on two runs to tie this up at five apiece. But in the top of the seventh, the Knights bats come alive, scoring four runs to take the 9-5 non-league victory over the Saints. And in their next game, the Knights get shut up by Redondo Union 11-0. It's Bishop's fourth shutout loss of the season. Totally switch, switching gears, soccer season is long gone, but some of Torrance's finest picked, some awards, picked up some awards from their play this season. We saw the West boys and girls have unbelievable inaugural regular seasons as members of the Pioneer League. The girls captured a Pioneer League championship and the program's first Southern section title since 1982. While the boys took the Pioneer League title without any issues going to perfect 10-0 in league play, West's Zach McGraw takes home Daily Breeze Player of the Year honors. The West Point bound McGraw finished the season with 32 points, helping his team to the second round of the Southern Section playoffs. Now other notable Torrance athletes getting some Daily Breeze first team love. Marcos and Breeze from Torrance High, Will Hayward from South and Tristan Lopez and Denver Silver Lake from West. And over on the girls side, another West Warrior takes home Daily Breeze Player of the Year honors. Let's get a drum roll please, Ken. Nope, okay, thanks for that, Ken. Jenna Hernandez, uh, who will be playing her college ball at Cal State San Marcos, helped lead the Warriors to a Pioneer League title and Southern Section Division IV title. And let's not forget about Warriors coach Jessica Murphy, who joined Hernandez and some of her other West players with Coach of the Year honors. Murphy, a former West Warrior, was an assistant over at South when the Spartans won the Southern Section Division IV title, and in her first season at West, she carried that success right over. Other notable Torrance athletes who received first team honors, Caitlin Fergulia and Ruth Soto from West, Annika Rodriguez and Alicia Sloss from Torrance, and Kayla Yankee from, from that team down south, the South Spartans. When we come back, we are going to take you back to the volleyball court as El Camino Warriors look to get back on track after two straight sweeps from conference opponents. Don't move a muscle. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Parents sure have their hands full, and they could use an extra hand. Now, every state offers free or low-cost health insurance for your sports hero or budding artist. Kids up to age 19 can get checkups, doctor and dentist visits, hospital care, prescriptions, and more. Your child may qualify based on your family size and income. It's one less thing to worry about. Call or go online for more information. Welcome back, everybody. Hit me up on Twitter. That's at Colin Kushner using the hashtag the sports desk and hashtag boom sauce. The El Camino Warriors men's volleyball team coming off those two straight conference losses to Santa Monica College and Long Beach City College. Elko has won the last seven meetings, seven meetings against Moore Park since 2012. And uh, here we go. Uh, there's Casey Wood. Namaste to you too, Peter Nordell. Uh, first set, Elko up 2-0. Nordell and Grebenau with the block. Elko with the early lead. 
Same set, Elko up 5-2 now. Cesar Medina with the kill. He'd have 16 in this one. Elko goes on to take set one. 25 seconds, 17. Second set all tied up at six. Wood with the kill. Elko up by a point now and later in the second. Lots of back and forth action. Elko down by two. Michael Espers shot. He's gonna go off Peter Sarmiento. Count it. Moore Park takes set two, 25-22. But Elko storms right back. They take the third set, 25 to 19. And in the fourth, Elko up by six, grabbing out the set. And Sarmiento with the finish. The Warriors take the fourth set and match three sets to one. Cesar Medina has 16 kills, and Chris Grebenau adds 14 digs in the conference win over Moor Park College. That's Elko's seventh straight win over the Raiders. So let's head back to Elko as they look for their second straight win against Santa Barbara City College Vaqueros. Elko taking on SBC, SBCC. The Warriors haven't lost to the Vaqueros since 2012. First set, we're all tied up at three. Chris grabbing out with the slam. Count it, Elko takes the 4-3 lead. Very next play, same scored. The Great Wall of Peter Sarmiento and Cesar Medina. They come up big, Elko up by two. and Takes the first set 25 to 20. Second set, SBCC up by seven. Pina with the kill for SB. Santa Barbara takes set numero dos. 25-22, third set, tied up at three apiece. Grabbing out the set and Medina with the smackdown. Elko up 4-3 and takes the set. Later in the third, match point for the Warriors. Peter Nordell with the kill. He'd have nine of those. Elko takes set 3, 25-16 in the fourth set. Nordell again, boob sauce. Elko takes down SBCC, three sets to one. Former South Spartan Peter Nordell has nine kills. Alan Sarinana adds nine digs in the dub. Elko takes her second win in a row in their regular season home finale. The Warriors improved to 15-3 overall and 8-3 in conference play. It's the second year in a row the Warriors have grabbed at least 15 wins. Now over on the softball diamond, the El Camino Warriors have been hashtag killing it. There, there really isn't a better way to describe the team's success. Now Elko with five different win streaks so far this season, including the three straight they have just won, trying to make that four against the Mounties. Mount San Antonio with a commanding 7-1 lead after four innings of play. And in the bottom of the fifth, the Warriors add 11 runs to cruise to the 12-9 victory. Reina Trejo leads the way for Elko with three ribbies. And Jacqueline Gonzalez adds two RBI in the win. And against Pasadena City, similar results. Elko takes down the Lancers 9-3 for the third time this year. Daniel Bonsky and Gabby Fortiani combined for five RBI in the dub. Elko improves to 26 and seven overall and 14 and one where it counts. Conference play with sole possession of first place. Now, staying on the topic of college athletics, we already talked about former Bishop, Bishop Montgomery Knight Tyler Harvey and how he led the nation in scoring this year. That's old news now. Harvey led, Eastern, led the Eastern Washington Eagles to the big dance where they fell in the first round to Georgetown. And most recently, Harvey also became an All-American honorable mention by the Associated Press. He became the third player in Eagles history to receive honorable mention All-American honors. And just when you think that's it for Tyler Harvey, well, guess again, the redshirt junior took home MVP honors in the Big Sky Conference this year. And to top everything off, he is casually declared for the upcoming NBA draft. So Tyler Harvey didn't have a Cinderella run, and really no teams did in this year's March Madness tourney. We all remember Steph Curry and Davidson's improbable run. Well, nothing that crazy this year. The 2015 Sports Desk Bracket Challenge has officially come to an end. My bracket was busted just a few days after making it. Let's be real here. You have a better chance at picking the winning team by what color their jerseys are and who has the better mascot. Anyways, I digress. The winner of the 2015 Sports Desk Bracket Challenge is Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its and myself, myself, both picked Kentucky to win. And just like 99% of America, we were also wrong. However, Cheez-Its with 45 correct picks out of 63, while I embarrassingly went 39 of 63. The madness is over and I couldn't be happier. Cheez-Its, congratulations on winning and please shoot us an email. That's the sports desk at torrentca.gov to claim your prize. And a few weeks ago, we had a little trivia question for you all, and I figured why not test your torrent sports knowledge once again? 
since baseball season is in full swing. What university did former West Warrior Joey Notch attend before El Camino College? Was it A, Northern Arizona University, B, Arizona State University, go Devils, C, University of Arizona, or D, Michigan State University? Hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or via email with your answers. All right, everybody, that's going to close the books on another week here on the Sports Desk. As always, we're available on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash TV. Or if you'd like to email the show with any story ideas, it's the Sports Desk at torrentca.gov. Also, feel free to hit us up on Twitter with pics, video, and anything sports related here in the South Bay. That's at Colin Kushner and use the hashtag the Sports Desk and hashtag Boomsauce. And we're also on Instagram, that's the Sports Desk TV. And don't forget, if you just feel like saying hi, you can do that as well. Take it easy, Torrance. We'll catch you next time.